Do you have a problem with Beeline's comments? No, nothing at all. Uh, the far, you know, listen, mistakes happen, and it's not like the man used the N-word or something. There are white players on his basketball team. It's not like he was directing his comments towards solely black players, and I think we also need to be careful about overreacting or looking for everything, uh, you know, every little syllable and every little word that people say. We're on national television. You're on national radio. Obviously, that's not the case with this particular individual. He's a basketball coach talking to his team in a film session. But the reality of the situation is that there are wordsmiths. There are experts. There are people that are on, on television and radio every day who've made mistakes, who've slipped up and said something that they should not have said or whatever. You apologize. You acknowledge the mistake and you move on. Not to mention the fact that I don't know what context this was set in. I don't know who it was directed at specifically. Uh, from my understanding, he was talking to his entire team. Last time I checked, Kevin Love is white. Uh, Osmond is white. Other players on the team are white as well. It's not just all the black players. So I just think that we need to all calm down a little bit. Uh, I saw I saw the rage or the rave in social media and what have you. Uh, this man did not spew uh, the N-word and was talking to people out of their names or anything like that. It was a film session. He was talking to his team. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, even if he had used the word thugs, I don't have a problem with it. I really, really don't. Yeah, this is um, – he made a beeline for that phone, though, didn't he, to call those players after he said that? Because of the world um, we're living in. Because yeah. of the yeah. world we're living in. And, and by the way, that's right. Look, a lot of good has come from the kind of PC culture on the left – where sensitivity about language and things that further marginalized, marginalized groups were brought to light and there was greater sensitivity about it. And a lot of good was done because of that. Like, for example, UNLV, remember the team? And I think this was a document, uh, this may have been a 30 for 30, where uh, people were describing the UNLV team a certain way back in the day, the 91 team. And they're like, well, hold on, Greg Anthony's like the, the head of the conservative club or what? what you're, you're, you're just, you're, you're stereotyping because you see race and then using language that's coded language. So a lot of that stuff is good, but then it can also run amok and it gets out of control. And, and on the right, people roll their eyes. Legitimately, they roll their eyes and go, come on, that has nothing to do with anything. This has nothing to do with anything. It's not, I realize that, that the NBA is a predominantly African-American league, even with the influx of, of increasingly of European players, South American players. But nevertheless, if a guy says thugs, if, if, if a coach did say thug, you're not playing like thugs anymore, that could just mean a kind of a, a, a way of not playing artful defense, right? Like the bad boy Pistons actually were a great defensive team. The Knicks teams that came after them with Pat Riley were kind of more of a thuggish mm -hmm. defensive team. They fouled you more and stuff. And by the way, even if you look at the bad boy Pistons, you know who the thug was on that team? The thug was Bill Lambeer, right? He was the thug. So, so I, I don't find that language racially charged in this sense. And if he truly did mean slugs playing, you know, you're not playing like thugs, you're not playing like slugs, if he's making that up, which I would give him the benefit of the doubt and say he's not, oh, my God, what kind of a world are we living in where the coach then has to turn thugs into slugs to say, I'm not saying that you're playing defense in a kind of non, not an artful manner. I'm saying you're not playing slow anymore. This is an example, I believe, not of like a good thing about heightened sensitivity, but of PC run amok. I think this issue is complex, and Stephen A., I agree with you. I think context in which you say something is everything. We weren't there to understand the context in which he said that. Unfortunately, we live in a world where perception is reality, and the fact that thug, I don't think it was racially charged either, but I do feel that there is somewhat of a coup happening inside the Cavs organization within that locker room. I think mm. the teammates, the players do not like John Beeline, so I think this compounds upon the issues that they already had with him. And look, I think it's a lot to disrupt a franchise and how their culture is given. Because I think their culture is not at a good place right now. And it's apparent that they don't want John Beeline, the players do not want John Beeline to be mm -hmm. a part of that moving down, moving into the future. I've known John Beeline. I do not condone him saying thugs. Let me first and foremost say that. I do not condone that. I think he misspoke. I think it's kind of a PR nightmare when his back got put in the corner. I don't think the way he's handled the aftermath has been great. But I have known this man for 11 years. Now, I'm mm -hmm. not saying this doesn't leave him apt to do things I do not know about. But every time I've seen John Beeline, I've heard nothing but tremendous stories from his players about who he is. Mm -hmm. I've seen him treat us with nothing but respect. And I've heard former players say nothing but things that – 
Great well, things about GM, John Beeline. Great things about let, John Beeline. So I let, can't be sure about this whole scenario. Okay, well, let me let, let me chime in. First of all, Max, I appreciate you bringing up Greg Anthony. Uh, that's my brother, my friend. I got a lot of love for him, and he's a brilliant brother. That's number one. <laughs> number two, let me also say – I'm going to repeat myself in saying this. I don't give a damn if he did say the word thug. <laughs> right. I have been on the record saying this on many occasions. If I were a GM or president of basketball operations, I'd make sure to have a thug on my team. I don't think it's a negativity. I think that in the sport of – let me tell you something. If I had, let me finish, Jay. If I had Jay Williams coming out of Duke and he the number two overall pick – and I think that he's going to wax a bunch of people. He's going to bust their butt on a basketball court. I'm going to expect cats to go at him. I mean, uh, uh, Charles Oakley is a friend. I think he can be thuggish. It is not an insult. It is a compliment, okay? No, Nick, and, oh, by the way, like you said, Bill Are you comfortable with ever being called a thug? No, I, I'm not. And that, if you're saying be thuggish-like, I think that's different than saying well, thugs, Stephen A. And it, I think 10 but, years ago, but, 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 but I think there was this. like that? There, Jay, Jay, hold on. I hear hold on, Jay. Locker, you're not 10 talking, years ago, Stephen A. You're not talking and go like thuggish-like. You're not, you're, that's not how you talk in a sentence. I want you to be thuggish-like. You say, I want you to be a thug, or I want you to be thuggish. That's what you told me. I want you to be a rough rider. Stephen A. It doesn't make it okay. I think he misspoke. It doesn't make it okay, though. If he went, hold on, hold on, Jay. Hold on, hold on, Max. If the man went on the air with a microphone and said that, Jay, you might have a point. In a damn film session, talking to a bunch of dudes who, by the way, are 10 and 27, 10 and 20, I don't care what they like. They're 10 and 27. Who cares about what you like? Win games. Then I don't care about what you like. This is what I said, though. 10 years ago, I would agree with you. I think in today's age, that locker room is a microphone, my friend. There is no more privacy. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.